Hey everyone, hope you all are well. So last weekend the weather here in Ireland was absolutely magnificent. We don't get the good weather often, so really decided to make the most out of it. That along with the fact it was a bank holiday weekend, it couldn't have worked out better. So today I'm showing you how I went from this to this for the barbecue over the weekend. I always wear my makeup quite heavy regardless of occasion, it's just my style and what makes me feel most confident. So I'm starting off with the brows and I'm just coating the brow hairs with a brow powder. I'm using the Kiss Beautiful Brow Kit. You've got two different shades of brown in it, a wax and a highlighter. And I'm using my angled brush and long sweeping motions to add the dark brown shade throughout my brows. So once my eyebrows resemble little slugs, I then go in with concealer. I'm using the Infallible Concealer from L'Oreal. It's a full coverage concealer and I've just added a stripe of this under the brows. And now I'm using a small C-shaped brush to carve out the shape of my brows. So I always apply the concealer a bit down from the brow itself and then I blend upwards so that I'm not left with a load of product at the edge of the brows that I have to worry about blending out. Um, once I've blended the concealer up to the brows and sweeping along underneath the hairs to clean up the shape and then once I've made my way from the front to the tail of the brow um, I still have a bit of additional concealer on the brow bone so I'm scooping that up and transferring it over to the other brow to clean up that one and I'm literally then repeating the process. Now I'm just using a large C-shaped brush that's synthetic and I'm patting over the concealer to blend it into the skin. Next then I'm taking a pump of the Max Factor Miracle Prep Primer. It's an illuminating primer that I find is really hydrating on the skin. It's a nice one for drier skin types or for those that just want a nice glow to the skin either. As you can see my body is tanned but my face is as white as a ghost so I'm going in now and matching things up. I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible Stay Fresh Foundation. This is in the shade 125 and I apply a few stripes of this to my face and then blend in with my foundation brush. I like to use a brush that has a bit of an angle to it because it fits into all the nooks and crannies on my face. This foundation provides decent enough coverage, I would say a medium coverage. Um, as you can see it's masking any redness that I had, any blemishes pretty well too. Despite that though, it leaves a radiant finish to the skin. I'm taking the YSL All Iris Stick Foundation in the shade B50 now and I'm adding a few stripes of this on the perimeters of my face. I'm doing this to deepen the foundation slightly to match the tan a bit better and to add some warmth and as well to add a touch more coverage. And I'm only adding it to the outer portion of my face because I'll be adding a full coverage concealer to under my eyes. So let's say that's the center of the face covered and I don't want to be adding full coverage on top of full coverage and resulting in a cakey finish. I'm taking that infallible concealer again and this is in the shade 325 Bisque. I'm dotting some of this under the eye area, I'm just adding it directly under the eyes and not bringing it down into like an upside down triangle because I'm going to blend it down there anyway so I'll have a brightening effect in that area like regardless. So um, I'm not forgetting in at the tear duct as well, make sure to blend your concealer up into that portion so that you have a nice brightness there because a lot of people suffer from darkness particularly in that area. So I'm just tapping the brush over the skin and by pressing it into the skin in this way I'm keeping the coverage. I'm not sweeping and blending it out onto the skin. I'd get a sheer finish if I did that and that's not the look I'm going for. Now I'm using my powder. So once I've finished with liquid and cream products I'm setting everything in place with one of my favourite powders, the Rimmel Stay Matte. It's cheap and cheerful and does an amazing job. This is the translucent version, it does come in tinted versions too, but the one I'm using is just going to mattify the skin without adding any additional colour. Next then I'm going to sculpt the face, I'm using this contour from Inglot, it's their HD sculpting powder in 514 and it's another one that's well loved as you can see, I'm just using a small dome shaped brush to work this product into the hollows of the cheeks and then I'm going to add another product from Inglot, it's their pressed powder in the shade 52. I'm picking up some of that on an angled brush and I'm using circular motions to apply to the cheek area. I use the previous shade to more so define and hollow out the cheeks and I'm using this to add some warmth to the skin. So I'm adding this along the cheeks, up around the forehead too and then down along the jawline as well. Then I'm adding some blush, this is the Urban Decay blush in the shade Score. I'm using a small brush to work this onto the apples of my cheeks and then I'm sweeping it back towards the hairline. And I never panic if the colour is too intense, if that happens and I don't like how it looks. I go over it with whatever brush I use for powder and I use whatever's left in the brush to tone down the blush. 
To highlight then, I'm using the lightest shade from my Sleek Salsas Highlighter Palette, and I'm applying the product with a small tapered brush. So I'm sweeping it along the tops of the cheeks and working it just above the brow bone in a C shape. I always then apply a little to either side of my nose, I just prefer how this looks, then applying it directly to the tip of the nose, and then I'm highlighting above my lip. Onto the eyes now, I'm using my old Reliable Urban Decay Primer Potion to prep and prime my eyes for the shadows that are to come. Then I'm using my No Cosmetics Felt Tip Liner Pen to map out the shape of my winged liner. I'll use this as a guide then um, for as to where to blend my shadows in from and then because I have the guideline there, I just have to fill in the lines later on and I'm less likely to mess up then at that point because I've done the groundwork. Now I'm taking Makeup Geek's Cocoa Bear Eyeshadow. I picked up some of this shadow on a fluffy blending brush and I'm starting by patting it down close to the lash line. I'm making my way across the eye with padding motions and once I've coated the lid area then I'm using circular motions to blend that shadow up into the crease. And I just want a light wash of this shade from lash line to crease. I'm not really picking up any additional shadow, I'm literally just working with what I have and gradually fading that shadow out. Once I'm happy with how that looks then I'm taking Makeup Geek's Chickadee and I'm using a larger fluffier blending brush and applying this right over the edge of that brown. Now I always work my shadows from light to dark just because I find they get a better blend that way but sometimes if I'm in a hurry I'll do it this way. So I'm just further fading out that brown with the chickadee shade and then as you can see it's just adding a further warmth to the look. Next then I'm taking Makeup Geeks Americano which is a deep brown. I'm using this to add some depth so I'm taking a slightly more tapered blending brush and I'm beginning by blending this colour down on the outer third of the eye then I'm sweeping across into the crease and I use a tapered blending brush because as the name suggests the bristles are tapered to a point so it's allowing me to get right into the deepest part of my crease. It's a good brush to use if you're wanting to add some depth and definition to your eye makeup look. Then I'm taking the shadow Corrupt also from Makeup Geek and this is the only one that I haven't hit pan on because I use it mostly for adding depth and it's pigmented so you don't need to use a lot. I'm basically taking a touch of this now in a pencil brush and I'm filling in along that winged liner outline. Once I've made my way across the eye out to the tail then I'm smoking the black slightly upwards and I'm just running my brush back and forward along that outline. Now I'm using a small bullet shaped brush to apply some of the chickadee shadow down along the lower lash line. Then I'm smoking some of the shade Cocoa Bear down along there too. I'm literally repeating the routine as above. And now I'm applying Americano but this shade I'm only blending this halfway across the lower lash line whereas with the other two I apply them right into the tear duct. Now I'm using an angled brush to apply the black eyeshadow right into the roots, the lashes and again I'm only applying the black around halfway across the lower lash line. Once I've packed on the eyeshadow then I'm switching back to my small bullet shaped brush and picking up a little more of Americano and using this to help blend out that black. I'm using the highlighter shade again to add a pop around my tear duct and then I'm using my much loved um, Urban Decay 24 7 Glide on Eye Pencil in Torch to line my waterline. And to help that last all day, I'm using Makeup Geek's Morocco on an angled brush and I'm pressing this shadow on top of the liner to set it in place. Now I'm using my Holy Grail liner to create my flick. It's the Essence Liquid Ink Waterproof Liquid Liner and I adore it, literally haven't come across anything that compares to it. No high end liquid liners have a patch on it and I'm just using this as you can see now to fill in that outline and to create my wing. Take your time with this step, just use small strokes and you're less likely to go wrong then. For lashes, I'm using the Sosu um, by SJ Lashes. These ones are from her Seven Deadly Sins collection and are called Desire. To blend my own lashes in with the false ones then, I'm using the No Cosmetics Volume Act Mascara and I'm adding this to my top and bottom lashes. Then I'm going to move on to the lips. So we're adding some finishing touches now. I'm using the No Cosmetics Lipstick in the shade Happy Tan. It's one of my all time favourite nude lipsticks. I'm probably well more than halfway through the bullet by now moisturizing on the lips and it just lasts and lasts. Then I'm going to add a gloss and this is the Max Factor Lip Lacquer. Big fan of this too. It's a similar color to the lipstick and um, it's in the shade Honey Nude. I'm not really a gloss person. I prefer matte lips but I actually really like this combination. Then to set everything in place I'm using this setting spray from Penny's. It's a hydrating one and costs around a fiver. I'm adding a quick spritz of that and then I'm done. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and a bit maybe more so fun to watch and I'll catch you all soon.